how can we become successful Christian? Or how can we become fruitful Christians? Now, if you are, if you've been a Christian for several years, that you may want to examine yourself if you are truly growing、uh, in Christ Jesus and if you're truly becoming a disciple or a Christian that God wants you to be. But how do we measure that? Some people might say, I have read the Bible for 50 times and I've been you know, praying every day for two, three hours. And that really tells me that I'm、uh, growing and I'm a fruitful,、uh, true Christian or true disciple of Christian. Christian. Well, that may be true, but those are not necessarily the metrics that Jesus set to tell us that we are true or fruitful Christian. So I want us to look at how Jesus defines the fruitful Christian and how it benefits us and how we can become a fruitful Christian. So let's look at John chapter 15, verse 5 together. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So in this passage, Jesus is explaining how we can become fruitful. Because he says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me. He who abides in me, I in him, he bears much fruit. So, in today's passage, I want to touch on two things. The first one is benefit of abiding, because Jesus said, if you abide in me, then you will bear fruit, right? So, the question is how we can abide. So, method of abiding. So, these are the two major points I want to、uh, address today. So, let's go back to today's passage. By the way, John chapter 15. Is full, full of Jesus' saying. So Jesus said to、uh, his disciples through this message, but this message is not only for his disciples, but also this is for us. So we need to pay attention to what Jesus said. And in this, the、uh, whole chapter, in chapter 15, this is the pinnacle point that Jesus said, abide, abide, abide in him and he in us, so that we can bear. Fruit. So, there are four benefits I want to address today from today's passage. And when you abide in Christ Jesus, this will happen. So, first of all, as you can see, you will bear, you will bear much fruit. Now, Jesus uses the analogy of him being the vine and we are the branches because he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Now, which one is stronger? Of course, vine is stronger because without vine, branches cannot be there. But without branches, vine can still be there. And vine is the source of life because the vine is the, the channel that brings and defeats. Into the branches. So, this is why Jesus said into this passage that he who abides in me and on him, he bears much fruit. Now, if you're the branches, then you must be stick to the vine. And then, when you are stick to the vine, because and through the,、uh, the vine, you are going to bear fruit. This is why Jesus said, Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from vine, branches can not do anything. Even if the branch is thick, And good looking, but as, as soon as the branch is cut off from the vine, the branch will lose its life and then it's not, it's not going to do anything. It will be dead. So, apart from Jesus, you can do nothing. But this is also the same thing that we learned from Gen,、uh, John chapter 1, verse 3. Now, Jesus is the creator, and then apart from him, nothing exists. So, what does it really tell us about who Jesus is? Jesus is the creator, but not just being the creator, but he is also the sustainer because in today's passage, he is the vine. That means the vine sustains the branches. So, Jesus is essential to us because he is the creator. And he is the sustainer, he is the source of life, and he is the source of existence. So we need Jesus. So abiding in Christ Jesus will bear much fruit. Now, second, second benefit of abiding in Christ Jesus is what? It is answered prayer. Your prayers will be answered because if you look at verse 7. 
If you abide in Him, you just ask anything in Jesus' name and it will be done. So what a wonderful promise that we have in Christ Jesus. If you abide in Christ Jesus, then you can ask anything in His name and then those prayer requests will be done. But we need to look at the context and the condition right here. So if you just skip all the important part and the foundation and if you just pay attention to answered prayer, then it's almost like a genie's lamp that whatever you whatever you wish that you have then you can just ask it and then genie is going to do it for you but that is not the case because it says abide in jesus christ when you abide in him then you are part of him and you are not vine so you cannot control the vine but you are we are just the branches that means jesus in control and he is our master so being in him him in us that we follow his wish and his will so when you say abide in christ jesus then you ask anything in his name it will be done it's basically we are asking according to his will because we are part of him and we are sticking we are in him so that we're asking jesus's will in his name so it will be done so this is the secret of answered prayer by abiding in christ jesus you will experience amazing amazing work of god that he is answering your prayers in Christ Jesus in his name but also there is a third benefit that you will see you will see that God's name God is being glorified glorifying glorifying God glory to God in verse 8 when you are asking the Lord Jesus Christ in his name to do his will, then it will be done. You will see the amazing um, the work of God that your prayers are being answered. But if you just say bearing fruit and your prayers being answered, it, lo- it looks like it's a kind of self-centered. Like I bear the fruit and I, um, you know, my, ans- my prayers are being answered. But it's not just that. It's not just about us. It's not about us because in turn, we see that God's name will be glorified. So we are glorifying his name by bearing fruit and by being in Christ Jesus, by abiding in him. Now, some people might say, you know, we glorify God through going to church and worshiping the Lord and our church is open 24-7 so you can come anytime. You can glorify God through praising His name and uh, doing all this great, you know, ministries. Of course, this is how, that's how we can also, you know, glorify God. But the essence of glorifying God is here in today's passage that we bear fruit in His name, abiding in Him. And it is not just about us but it is ultimately glorifying the name of christ jesus it is ultimately glorifying god the father so this is how we glorify him and uh, this is this is through abiding in christ jesus so abiding in jesus and then you will bear fruit you will answer the prayers will be answered and god will be glorified but there's one more there's a benefit of abiding in christ jesus number four is you will be proven proven to be his disciples here's important word my or his jesus's disciple also this is in verse 8 so what does that really mean you when you abide in christ jesus then you will have this all the answered prayer and god is going to be glorified and then you will be known the other people around you will recognize that you are disciples disciple of christ jesus so it is not somebody else's disciple, uh, but it says, Jesus clearly said, you are going to be proven to be my disciple, to be Jesus' disciple. What an honor it is. Again, some people might say, you know, I have lots of knowledge and theology, and then I pray a lot more than other people. So that's the metrics of being disciple of Christ Jesus. Well, Jesus' parameter is very different here. That Jesus says, you are uh, you are proven to be my disciple, not because of all those activities, but because you are abiding in me. And God is glory, God is being glorified of uh, that. And then that's how you are going to be proven by 
my my disciple. Jesus is disciple. So we need to look at what the Bible says, what Jesus said in His Word. We need to abide in Christ Jesus, and we have have all these benefits. Now the question is important. Question number two is this: How then can we abide in Jesus? That's a very important question, right? Because we just talked about the benefit of abiding in Christ Jesus. We have all these things. We want to be fruitful. We want to be recognized. We want to be proven to be His disciple. We want to glorify God. We want to have this answered prayer. Now, when I mention these four benefits, it's like, wow, this is everything that we need as Christian. This is definitely a matrix of being successful as Christian, as disciples of Christ Jesus. So the question is, how can we have all these things? To do that, we need to abide in Christ Jesus. Then, how can we abide in Jesus Christ? So, that's something that I wanted to uh, pay attention to, um, because in verse ten, very important, verse ten: If you, if you keep His commandment, if you keep His command, then you will abide in His love. You will abide. In Jesus, as Jesus kept commandment of God the Father, and He abides in Christ, uh, He abides in the God the Father. Just like that, we need to keep His commandment so that we can abide in Christ Jesus. Then, what is His command? Well. Uh, the uh, John chapter fifteen answers that question as well. Look at verse twelve. It says, Jesus. This says, "This is my commandment, which is love one another, as he has loved us." Okay. Now this is repeated several times in the book of John, because we also learned from、uh, two weeks ago in the verse、uh, chapter thirteen, verse thirty-four and thirty-five. I give you new commandment. And Jesus saying, "Love one another as I have loved you." And to this passage in verse twelve and verse verse seventeen also, Jesus said, "Love one another." This I command you: love one another. So love is the key. When you love one another, then what happens? You will abide in Jesus. Then what happens? You will have all these benefits. So it starts with love, love. Now the question is, how should we love? What kind of love is Jesus talking about? It's like a man and woman loving each other. It's like romantic love. Is that、uh, what you mean? So if you love that way, then you will abide in Jesus. Of course, that's not because even outside of Jesus, right? There are people who are loving each other. But is is that really the true、uh, love that the Bible is really talking about? Of course not, because you know when you look at verse. Twelve, verse twelve and verse seventeen. It's like a sandwich structure here in this passage that love one another, love one another. But in between verses thirteen through sixteen, something、um, is included right there because that shows how Jesus, how Jesus has loved us. So,、uh, for example, in verse thirteen. Jesus says, "No, there is no greater love than this." So Jesus is defining what love he is talking about, and、uh, what love he,、uh, what love is the、uh, the greatest love is. He says, "Lay down, laying down one's friend, laying down his life." For his own friend. Now the question is, who is that friend? Like verse fourteen and verse fifteen. Jesus saying, Jesus saying to his disciples, "You are no longer slaves." That means they were slaves, but Jesus calling them as friends now. And then Jesus is really saying, "The、uh, I am ready. I am laying down my life for that friends for you." But also we need to look at who. What is this slave and what is this、uh, friend? It's not just his disciple, but also us as well, because we were slaves. What kind of slave were we? We were slave to what sin and death. But Jesus is calling us as his 
friends, and he is going to, he died, he laid down his own life for us because we are his friends, just like the disciples were friends to Jesus Christ. But, but let's be honest uh, about who we are. Are we really um, worthy to be called as his friends? Do we really, um, do you really think that you will be uh, measured up to be his friend? Of course not. Because the Bible clearly says we are sinners. Wages of sin is death. Sinners are completely enemies to God because God is perfectly holy. So the holy God cannot truly have us as his friends. But why did Jesus said, um, why did Jesus call us as his friends? And also, if you look at verse 16, I really want to encourage you to read this passage over and over and over again because this is so important message for all of us. It says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you so that you will bear fruit and your fruit will remain. And then whatever you ask in my name, you it will be done. It will be given to you. So verse 16 is kind of like a summary. But it's interesting that Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you. Appointed, chose, and appoint, appointed uh, his disciples. So what does this really mean? I mean, let me unpack this. Now, Jesus called, Jesus chose his disciples. But what kind of people were they? Were they like PhDs and were they very uh, prominent leaders of the country? Not at all. They were just fishermen. Many of them are just not recognizable people. But it's just normal people. But it's even less than that because in reality, they're all sinners. We're all sinners. But Jesus Christ, he chose us and he appoints us and he laid down his life for us. Why? Because He loves us. But how did He love us? By taking our sins on Him and He died in our place. That He took our sins and He, even though He is not sinner, He does not even know sin, but He became sin. Just like in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Then He died in our place. So that is the love that Jesus is talking about here. When he said he laid down his life for his friends, he is really saying he laid down his life for his enemies and who became later his friends because we were enemies because of our sins, but we became his friends because of his love. Now, some people might say, it, you know, even non-believers can die for their friends, of course, because they're friends. However, Jesus' love is totally different because Jesus' love is demonstrated as in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. While we, while we were still enemies to Him, He died for us. So that is the level of love that Jesus is talking about. And then Jesus said, there is no greater love than this, one who laid down his life for his friends. And that's how Jesus showed, and that's how Jesus lived, and that's how Jesus died, and that's how Jesus loved. Now, he is asking us to love one another as he has loved us. What does that mean? That we need to love this sacrificial love as Jesus showed that he loved his enemies by dying for them. And he is calling even his enemies as his friends and he chose and he appointed he laid down his life for them likewise we need to do we need to love one another as Christ has loved us and when we do that we will abide in him in his love and all these benefits will follow so how should we live first of all we definitely need to understand and believe amazing amazing love of god again as i mentioned there is no greater love than this that one laying down his own life for his friend but it's this friend is difficult friend it's a different friend it's not like our closest friend but unlikely friend who is an enemy but jesus showed that love so we need to meditate on this love continually so why, why do we do this like maybe every day at some point 
uh, you read this and read and meditate on this John chapter 15 continually and meditate on how much he loved us, that Jesus loves you. This gospel truth, gospel power, gospel love is the answer to all the questions and all the problems in the world because it's easy for us to love someone who is doing good to us, but it is impossible for us to love someone in someone who is doing wrong to us. But that's how Jesus loved us, that Jesus loved unlikely people like us, even though we're still sinners, Christ died for us. So let this message sink in your mind and heart and meditate on this verse so that you can love others. As I said earlier in another uh, the preaching message, if you do not love, if you do not uh, receive the love of God, if you have not experienced it, then you cannot truly really love other people. Because there may be um, very egoistic love for other people. And even they can sacrifice themselves. As we see in the uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it talks about love. But there's a very interesting thing uh, mentioned there. Even if you give your body to be burned, that means a big sacrifice. Even if you give your possessions to the poor, I mean, that's a lot of sacrifice, right? But without love, it is nothing. So that means even sacrificial love and the recognizable, uh, the love in the media that everyone respects can be also love without love. I mean, it can be the sacrifice without love. How is it possible? Because those people have not received the true, ultimate, sacrificial love of Christ Jesus. And they're just doing heroic love with their own um, power, with their own egoistic desire. But they are doing it for their friends, for their country. So there's something emotional attachment right there. But it's not unconditional love. It is conditional love. But Jesus' love is unconditional love that he took our sins on him and he died totally different level of love and that's the love that christ has loved and that's the love that god wants us to love that's the love that god wants us to live out so that we need god in this god is not only the creator and sustainer but he is the lover he's the ultimate lover so we need to meditate on his lover love and we need to uh, depend on his love and on his power so that we will be able to love others as christ has loved us and secondly when we love and we will abide in Christ Jesus. And we'll have all these wonderful benefits of bearing fruit, answered prayer, glorifying God, and will be proven by, proven to be His disciples. So it all starts with a love. So as we do that, let's keep on loving. So love should not be just a one-time thing, but it should be continual so that we will continue to abide in Christ Jesus. Abide in Christ Jesus, in other words, it means remain in Christ Jesus. So we need to continue to walk with Him. We need to be led by Him, led by the Holy Spirit, so that we will bear fruits. Now, fruits are mentioned in Galatians chapter 5, verse verses 22 through 23 it shows the nine characteristics of the uh, the sanctified being sanctified the characteristics of the christian but it's really the characteristics of who god is you know love joy peace kindness goodness self-control all these nine fruits are coming from the holy spirit so we need to bear the fruit it's a more internal fruit that will be shown in our life but also you will see as you walk with christ jesus as you abide in christ jesus you will bear lots of fruit as jesus did uh, in john chapter 14 verse 12 if you believe in me you will do the same work that i do and even greater works than this that means you will be fruitful in your ministry in your life for Christ's kingdom so you will see when as you share the gospel you will see uh, you make when you make disciples of Christ Jesus then you will see the great work of God being done in and through you so internally externally you experience the bearing fruit and pray in Jesus name not for your own sake but in Jesus name for his kingdom as you do that you will experience the your prayers being answered and you will see that God is being glorified not our name but his 
name alone, and the people will see us as Jesus' disciples. So that is a wonderful life of Christian, and that is the successful life of Christian, and that is the that is the fruitful Christian. So let's focus on what Jesus said in John chapter 15, and let's pray and depend on Him so that we can live out this wonderful, fruitful Christian life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for wonderful message that you have given us through John chapter 15. Father, help us to love one another. Father, it is impossible for us to love our enemies, but Father, we want to uh, meditate on Christ Jesus who died for sinners like us. So Father, please help us then uh, guide us to love one another as you did so that we will continue to abide in you so that we will be able to bear fruit and we'll be seeing, we will see our uh, answer. We will experience the answered prayer. We'll see that your name being glorified among all nations uh, through our life. And then, Father, please uh, help us to be proven to be your disciple so that even non believers would know who you are through our life, through our witness. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen.